Hello. It's good to see you. Today we're going to talk about drama. And I know it's it's kind of fun and entertaining to, you know, talk about gossip and drama, but it's not really so fun to have a life that is full of drama, or at least I don't think it is. Um, and I thought I would just do another one of my little Mama Mary's lectures about how to remove drama from your life if you find that you have a lot of drama in your life and you, you don't like it. Like, I, you know, I can say I'm someone who has successfully extracted drama from my life and it was one of the best things I ever did. It wasn't easy, but fortunately in my circumstances, I was able to identify the source of the drama and it was coming mainly from one person. I removed one person from my life, which I hate I had to do. But when I removed that one person from my life, all the drama went with them. And my life has been very peaceful ever since. So it can it can be done. It's not always simple. And so it usually involves some, you know, you have to confront people. You have to deal with some real issues and stuff. And sometimes you can't remove it. Um, but maybe you can learn to manage it a little better. So I thought I would talk about that a little bit, and I will tell you what sparked this idea for me, and it, and it came to me about a week ago. But before I do, I wanted to tell you just some random bits and pieces first. Um, my hair is not speaking to me today. My hair hates me. Do you ever do something to your hair, and then it just it just becomes very grouchy for a little while? That's mine. I used some of this stuff last night. This is, and I'm going to totally butcher the name, Christophe. Christophe Robin, or whatever it is, Christopher Robin, like from Winnie the Pooh, but not really. Um, it's this scrub, it's this cleansing, purifying scrub with sea salt in it for your hair. And I used some of this on it last night. Now, it has these big chunks of sea salt in it, and they don't dissolve. That was so weird. It was so weird. Now, it has a lovely lather to it. You scoop it out of the little thing here. It's plastic. You scoop it out. You mush it around in your hands and you, you know, massage it into your scalp and your hair. And it, it makes a lovely lather, but you end up with these big chunks of salt that don't even dissolve. Like they were under my feet. It was uncomfortable. It was like my tub had turned into a dirt road or something. I don't know. So I, I followed the directions. I massaged it into my scalp and my hair and all that. And I let it sit for however long it sat. I don't remember now. Um... Oh, it doesn't say. Well, I'll let it sit in there for a little bit. And then I rinsed it out, and it didn't say what to do after that, but it left my hair feeling really weird. Like it just felt crunch, not crunchy, but dry. So I just took some of my conditioner and I, you know, I conditioned my hair and then rinsed that out. And air, you know, every time I wash my hair, I do it at night before bed, and I go to bed with wet hair. I've been doing it for 30 years probably. I almost never blow dry my hair or do any kind of anything to it um, but I did that and I got up this morning I could not get a brush through my hair it had thousands and thousands of tiny tangles in it like if you've ever had long hair and you've gone for a long motorcycle ride it well anytime your hair is just in the wind a lot it gets thousands of little tiny tangles in it that was my hair this morning and it was frizzy and crazy and it feels it feels like straw it really, it's still, I've been taking my nails and just gently trying to get, it, it keeps tangling. I get these little tiny tangles in my hair. I used a leave-in conditioner. I did this matrix oil stuff on it, you know, trying to, you know, loosen it up a little bit. It didn't help at all. So this, I don't, maybe, maybe my hair didn't need to be detoxified. Maybe I need toxins in my hair. I don't know, but this is supposed to purify and detoxify your scalp and your your hair or whatever. Apparently, I need toxins, so I don't think I'll be using this anymore. It, it I, mm -mm. I have lost so much hair since this morning just trying to get the, the little tiny knots out of it. I will never use that stuff again. I just wanted to show you this. Because this came in one of my Ipsy Glam Bag Ultimate boxes. And I just now got around to trying it. I don't like it at all. I followed the directions exactly. Um, and I was not happy. My hair was so tangled. 
and knotted and it's the texture of it is it feels extremely crunchy and dry I'm gonna do a deep conditioning treatment on it tonight it feels like over processed bleached hair is what it that's what it feels like to me it it does not feel good at all it feels very dried and nasty and I mm -mm. What else happened? I got attacked by a bird this evening. Um, and it was kind of funny how that happened. Okay. And my, uh, th there's a little cubby under my mailbox, like where you'd put newspapers or whatever. A little, a little, just a little cubby there under the mailbox. And some starlings have made a nest in there. Well, I didn't, sometimes people will come around the neighborhood and put flyers in that little cubby. We all have them. And they'll put a flyer or something in there, you know, a piece of paper or a little free newspaper or whatever. Well, I didn't want anybody to stick anything in there and mess with, because you can't, you can't see the bird nest. It's kind of tucked back in there. I didn't want them to mess with, you know, to harm the birds or anything. So I was going out there to put a sign. I had made a little sign to put on the mailbox lid with arrows pointing down that says bird nest, you know, don't, don't, do not disturb, you know. I was going out there to put that up and one of the bird, one of the birds came flying out of there and started trying to attack me. <laughs> I dropped my sign, had to go back in the house. <laughs> he was swooping at me all the way back up to the house. He was chirping and chittering and chattering at me. And the whole way up I'm going, dang it, I'm trying to help and he's swooping at my head and trying to peck my scalp and it probably would have been less harsh than this stuff I put on my scalp last night. But anyway, I didn't get the sign put up. I thought maybe tonight after they go to sleep, like, you know, 10 or 11 o'clock at night, go out there and put it up. But they weren't having it at 6 o'clock this evening. I do know that. Uh, they were, uh, that bird was mad at me. He was trying to, he was trying to get my head. He was swooping at my head. I've never had a bird do that. That's the first time I've ever been attacked by a bird. I did have a seagull snatch a fig newton out of my hand at the beach one time, and I was there with my current husband, my, my lat, you know, Glenda the Good Witch, the, like, my third husband, and this, I had, I was standing there, I had a fig newton in my hand, and I felt something just sort of wrench it out of my hand, and I thought it was him because he was standing nearby, and I looked over because I was going to say, why are you taking my fig newton, and I saw a seagull flying away with my fig newton, it was this beach we were at, and they had the most aggressive seagulls I've ever seen. And there was a poor little girl who had a little bag of potato chips. She had just opened it. A seagull flew down and grabbed the entire bag and flew away with it. That poor child broke her heart. She was crying. Anyway, this is not an ASMR video. I don't know if you've realized that or not. It's a lecture. I have notes, so I don't have to talk any certain way. Um, oh, my shirt. I wanted to show you my shirt. This is Basement Jesus. Basement Jesus approves. Now I don't know if you're familiar with the YouTube channel Angry Cops. It's this guy who bought a crack house. Now I know that doesn't sound funny. He made this the first video he made walking through or trying to walk through this crack house he had bought that he's gonna try to fix up. It's one of the funniest videos I've seen in I don't know how long. Now I will tell you he does swear a lot, so if swearing bothers you you may not want to watch it, but I will leave a link to it down below. It's the funniest thing. But he, he, he did. He bought a crack house to fix up. And he just, his commentary as he goes, this is the first time he's been through the house. His commentary walking through this house is hilarious. And he gets down into the basement. The basement is totally jacked up. And there's just this random picture of Jesus down in the basement. So he dubbed it Basement Jesus. And Basement Jesus is a constant theme throughout the rest of the Crack House videos. Um, and, but he ran into some serious financial problems. Like this house is a real money pit. It has major issues. Um, and he started, he has t-shirts. And I felt bad for him. So I bought one of his Basement Jesus t-shirts. <laughs> uh, I just got it the other day. I thought I'd wear it. Um, but yeah, it, it, um, apparently this, this, this house is going to cost a lot to fix up. It has really major, major issues. And, um, but yeah, so then the following videos, I felt really bad for him because he was, you know, he's, the first one's hilarious. The other ones is just like, oh dude, oh my God, I am so sorry. And you know, it, it's almost as bad as like if somebody bought a really rundown mall 
you know, and they're all excited about it initially, but all you can think is, what kind of dummy would buy a mall? And, you know, you're going to have to put so much money into fixing it up. What kind of dumbass would do that, you know? It's kind of like if somebody would be that stupid. I mean, I, I don't know anybody that would do anything that dumb, but, yeah, this poor guy, he bought a crack house. I don't know that there was anything else I wanted to tell you. That was just, oh, no, there is one other thing. I had my phone here. I just went downstairs a minute ago, and, you know, we have this kitten. And um, the kids have not been able to come up with a name, and I'm tired of just calling it the kitten. Um, so I've decided that her name is Olive. I'm going to call her Olive. I think a subscriber suggested that. I can live with that. Olive. We're going to name her Olive. Although if she's like my other cats, she'll never be called that. I'll end up calling her Olivia or Olivey or... It'll be something other than Olive. Um, yeah. Punkin is Punkino, and Evie is Evie PV. I call her that, or Evie Butt. I call her <laughs> Evie Butt a lot of times. But anyway, I went downstairs just a minute ago. And look what I saw by the window in the living room. Look. Look, it's Evie. I know it looks like she's sitting on the kitten, but they were they were laying on the little bench together. I just thought that was cute. <laughs> yeah, Evie looks a little annoyed, but... <laughs> I had, I had to show you that. That was adorable. Okay. <sighs> you know, I can tell you, my life is so much better without drama. I, I can honestly say, I, I don't like a lot of turmoil and conflict in my life. I like peace and quiet. You know, I, I like for my life to be kind of boring, honestly, for the most part. I like it to be kind of quiet. You know, it's nice. Um... You know, I sleep better, I feel better, I'm more optimistic, I'm happier. But some people, it does seem like some people kind of attract drama. I mean, I'm sure we've all known people like that, like there's always something going on with them. Um, and and, and I, like I said, there, I did go through a period of time in my life where I did have a lot of drama in my life. And I wasn't happy about it at all. Um, I hated it. You know, I don't sleep well at night. It tears my stomach up. I, like, I, I feel like I can't, I can't eat. I get stressed. And, and uh, that's not for me. But some people seem to thrive on drama. And I think a lot of it, I think a lot of it comes from how you were raised. Like if you were raised in a kind of a tumultuous uh, environment, you know, maybe, um, that's maybe that's normal for you to have a lot of conflict in your life. Um, I don't know that that was the case for me. Um, I think I had a dysfunctional family, but a lot of conflict and drama wasn't really part of it. Um, I think there are two the first two important steps to eliminating drama from your life. And number one, you have to determine whether or not what you're dealing with is really drama. Or is it just a temporary set of circumstances that's causing conflict in your life? I don't really like the term drama because it's it's so it's so vague, you know, it's so generic. But I don't know of a better word to use. Um, you know, maybe you could say it's tumultuous. Your life is tumultuous. It's combative. It's I don't know high conflict, whatever. But you need to decide. You know, if what I, is what I'm dealing with, is it temporary or is it permanent? Is this something that's going to go away? Like if you're dealing with, he's playing with his horn. Sometimes they do that. I'm not sure what it means. Sometimes they, sometimes they blow the horn differently. I don't know why that is. I'm always afraid it's like somebody on the tracks or something. I don't know. Anyway. Like if you're going through a high conflict divorce, you know, you may have a, you know, a swell of drama in your life for a little while, but it, you know, it eventually will die down. You, you know, it's not going to go on forever or it shouldn't, you know, if it's going on forever, that's something else. But if you have just a little temporary swell, I mean, anybody can have that. Anybody can have a period of time where it's, you know, oh my God, there's so much going on and I don't like it. It's stressful. Like if you're involved in a court case or whatever, you know, custody issues, that can be very stressful and very dramatic. I've been there and done that. Trust me, I've spent, I've spent well over thirty thousand dollars in and out of court for child custody issues. I, I trust me, I know it's awful, not fun. 
Family court is not fun. So, but you need to figure out if is it temporary or is this like a chronic, do I have chronic drama in my life? I don't mean like chronic. I mean like, you know, long lasting drama. If you have chronic, you, know, you probably don't care about drama, about drama, but yeah. That's the first thing you have to do. You have to figure out, is it real drama or is this just temporary? Is it, is it going to fade away? The second thing you have to do, I think, is harder. I think this is the hardest thing you have to do. And the second thing is you have to be super honest with yourself. You have to be able to step outside of yourself and look at your situation objectively and say, where is this drama coming from? What is the source of this drama? And you have to consider the fact that it could be you. Am I the source of this drama? What is the common denominator here? Because I, here's what sparked this idea for me. I had theoretically a Facebook friend that I'm not really close with as somebody I knew long ago and we don't live near each other. Or we're not really part of each other's lives, but for some reason we're still Facebook friends. Um, this person is in her forties, allegedly, you know, has kids. She's about to become a grandmother. Um, you know, she has a job. She, you know, she's a grown woman. And every, every week or two, she would post something on Facebook just publicly for everyone to see. And it would be, it would be something like, hang on, Evie's eating a piece of tape. All right, sorry, she's under the bed. Um, she's fine. She's not eating tape. I know she was crinkling it. It sounded like she was eating it. She's like got her feet on it. Every week or two, she would post something publicly on Facebook, and it would be something to the effect of, you better stop riding by my house, or I'm going to kick your ass. I'm going to come out there and beat your tail. Now, if you can, if you ever saw the show, My Name is Earl, you remember Joy? Joy she is the epitome of Joy. She even kind of looks like Joy. She's very much like Joy Hickey from My Name is Earl. You know, and she would come on there, you better quit running your, you know, she would post this stuff. You better quit running your mouth. She would never call anybody by name. You better quit running your mouth about me. And sometimes it would be about multiple people at once. I heard all of y'all were talking about me. Well, I'm going to kick your ass. There was a common theme. You were talking about me. I'm going to kick your ass. That's what she would say. And I'm thinking, well, honey, you're talking about them. Why don't y'all just sit down and have conversation? And then if, then if a butt needs to get kicked, you can address it then. Why are you on Facebook telling everybody this stuff? You are a grown woman. It's, it's embarrassing. Like, I don't like the word cringy because it gets overused for everything. It was cringy as all hell. Like, I couldn't stand it. It was so, I, I felt embarrassed for her because it's like she has no idea how inappropriate it is. You are in your 40s. You are a grown woman. You're about to become a grandmother. And you're on here talking like somebody in middle school. Like, come on. But the the, the post that made me finally just mute her, like, we're, I didn't unfriend her, but I just, I don't want to, I can't see any more of this. The one that finally was did it for me was about a week ago when she posted in all caps, I hate drama, exclamation point. And I'm thinking, do you though? Do you really? Because it seems to me that over the last year or two, you have had problems with multiple people and it's not always the same people. Because I could tell from the comment sections that, you know, she has her flying monkeys or whatever that, you know, back her up. Oh, that's right. You tell them. And then they would start naming names. Oh, it's so-and-so and so-and-so. And it was different people. And I'm thinking, okay, you're having problems with all these different people. Now, what are the odds that all these drama-filled people just happen to fall into your life and not somebody else's life? I've never had that many drama-filled people fall into my life. So maybe the common denominator is you. Maybe you are the eye of that drama hurricane. Maybe you're the problem. Maybe, maybe the problem is you like drama a little too much and maybe you're helping to keep it going. I don't know. Like I say, I'm not around this person. I don't know. I'm not an expert. I just see what I see. But when she posted that she hates drama 
I was done. I said, we're done. I can't do this anymore. So I just muted her. So now I don't have to see anything from her anymore. And it was really funny too, because she's, uh, she's occasionally married. Uh, she keeps going back and forth with her ex-husband. And then she was randomly married to some dude for like a week and then they split up and then another guy came along and then she said she was homeless and there's always something going on with her and um she has this legion of guys that just they're super thirsty that they're usually the ones posting you know oh don't worry baby i'll take care of them for you oh you just tell me where they are and who they are and i'll take care of them and nobody should mess with you sweetheart it's hilarious i'm gonna kind of miss that it was funny but it's hard to admit, but for a lot of people, the drama starts with you. It doesn't start with the people that happen to be in your life. It starts with you. And I think that's one of the hardest things for people to admit. But I think that's true for a lot of people. And I think the people who say, I hate drama, a lot of them are the ones who generate it. And I wondered for a while if I was the source of the problems I was dealing with. But once I extracted that one person from my life and went no contact, all the drama ceased. It, it all went with them. It was amazing. It was, it was one of the best things I've ever done. Now, this was years ago. Fortunately, it's never come back. I've never had to deal with it since. It's been great. So let me show you my cards here. Oh, no, pumpkin wants out. Hang on. All right, she's cool. I have a little quote here for you that I, I think is pretty pretty well sums up this whole thing. Drama does not just walk into your life. Either you create it, invite it, or associate with it. And I don't know who said that. But that is so true. It doesn't just drop into your life out of the atmosphere. You either create it, or you invite it, or you associate with it. You cannot simply blame it on the universe or other people. So when you have drama in your life, one of the things I think you can do to sort of stem the tide a little bit with the drama that comes at you, one of the things you can do right away is to react responsibly. And I think part of reacting responsibly is to not blow things out of proportion and I know that can be very hard. When I was younger, I had a really hard time with, uh, I had a big concern over what people thought of me. It, it was an overriding concern of mine when I was younger, and somewhere along the way, I overcame that for the most part. But when somebody comes to you and says something like, hey, so-and-so said this negative thing about you, you can't control what other people say or do, but you can control how you react to it. That is completely up to you. And I would tell my hypothetical uh, Facebook friend, if, if I thought she were receptive to it, I would say, you know, the next time you hear that someone is talking about you or whatever, or talking about or flirting with your ex-husband or whatever they're doing, you don't have to stomp anybody's tail. You don't have to go on Facebook and talk about it. You can just let it go. You can just, you can just let it go. You know, sit down, write out all your feelings in a letter and then burn it or go for a jog or scream into a pillow. You don't have to react in an explosive manner to it. A lot of times, People will do and say these things just to get a rise out of you because they know it works. Um, you can react in a more responsible manner. You can choose to not react at all if you want to, but that's up to you. You are the only one who can determine what your reaction is going to be. Do you really want other people jerking you around by a chain and dictating how you respond to things? They're, they're, you're just a puppet on their strings if that's all you're doing. But you have to be you have to be really honest with yourself. Are you doing that? Have you been doing that? Have you had a habit of doing that? If you've had a habit of doing that, you can break that habit. You can start today, right now, and break that habit. If you want to, you could start working on it. I realized I had a habit of um, there were the, 
there was a person in my life who was able to push my buttons. This person knew really how to tick me off and just push those buttons and it would work like a charm. And then finally, one day I figured out what they were doing. And I decided that I was not going to let them dictate my behavior anymore. It's not easy. And I think sometimes when you begin to react differently, in my case, it got worse before it got better. They just pushed more buttons and pushed them harder and more frequently. But I I had decided you're not going to get that out of me anymore. You're going to have to go somewhere else to get your entertainment. You're not going to get it from me. I'm not going to dance for you anymore. And eventually they stopped. And it was blissful. It was peaceful. It was hard. It's hard to get over that hump. But once you do and they figure out, oh, this person's not going to fall for it anymore. I'll go bother somebody else. It it can be one of the greatest things ever. Going along the, the lines of reactions, put things into perspective. This And this can be hard to do in the moment, I know, especially when you're younger. I had a problem with this when I was younger, when I was a teenager or in my early 20s. It seemed like everything that happened was the most important thing in the world, and it was going to determine everything forever. Not really, especially when I was in high school. It seemed like, you know, who you are in high school for me, I went to a smaller school. You know, your your status is so important. The funny thing is that a lot of people don't realize when you graduate, none of that matters anymore. The deck gets completely reshuffled after you graduate. You all go your separate ways and you're free. I mean, if you, if you didn't like your status or whatever when you were in school, if you want to redefine yourself, you can. You can go out into the world and become anybody you want. It's awesome. It is amazing. I go to reunions, high school reunions reunions now, and people don't recognize me, which is weird, but it, they don't, they don't, they don't even know me because I was so invisible in high school. It's not that I look that different. It's that I am different inside. I feel like I'm very different from the person I, that they knew. I'm very different, but put things into perspective. It may seem like a big deal. But think about it for a second. Like my hypothetical friend. Okay, somebody's talking smack about you. Is it really going to matter five years from now? Is this thing that you're about to blow up over? She's gotten arrested a few times because of things that she's done, theoretically, to get back at these bitches. You know, I'm going to get back. Why? You're going to end up with a criminal record over it because you can't control your anger with people. Why are you even talking to these people? So you got to figure out, is it, is it going to matter in five years? Is it going to matter in six months? Ooh, somebody said something about you and you didn't like it. Does it really matter? Does it even matter right now? In the grand scheme of things, is it going to change anything? No, but your reaction might. You may end up doing or saying something that impacts the rest of your life. I mean, it happens all the time. You know, people get angry and go seek revenge and end up in prison for the rest of their lives or worse. You know, I mean, is it really worth the reaction you're planning to have? Is what you're planning to do, does it really match the situation? I guess a lot of times it doesn't. At the very least, before you do anything, before you send that message or post whatever, just sleep on it. Get, you know, go to bed, sleep on it, see how you feel about it the next day. At least take a little time to think about it. Another thing you can do is communicate honestly. I think this can avoid a lot of drama, especially, um, I think within families or a work environment. I know a lot of people have drama with coworkers or relatives, people that you can't necessarily get away from. You know, maybe you really like your job or for, you don't want to leave your job. they are family members you have to come into contact with. Um, I find that just open and honest communication can make a big difference because a lot of drama, I think, comes from misunderstandings. Just be honest with people and be clear. Don't beat around the bush. Don't vague post stuff online for them to see or for someone else to see so they'll go back and tell the person, hey, I think she was talking about you. It just exacerbates everything. You know, and I would tell my theoretical friend on Facebook, 
why don't you just, like I was saying, just sit down with whoever these people are or pick up the phone and call them and say, hey, we need to talk and sit down and have a face-to-face -face talk. Don't do it by text or on social media. Sit down face-to-face -face and actually talk to them. Figure out what's going on. Figure out what the person's problem is with you and see if you can come to some sort of agreement. If not, at the very least, try to understand where they're coming from and try to get them to understand where you're coming from. And if you can't come to an agreement, maybe you can at least agree to not stomp each other's butt. You know, that would be nice, especially when you consider the fact that we are way too old for that. If you're out of eighth grade, I think you're too old to be doing that. It's ridiculous, you know, and I would want to theoretically tell my friend, theoretically, you know, you could throw your back out. You know, we're, we're not getting any younger. You're about to be a grandma, for heaven's sake. You don't, you don't, don't get into fights with people pulling out hair and just stop. Just stop. Now, this is something that I use for everything, not just drama. Look for the lessons, and I do this with everything. Um, I think any bad situation in your life, there can be a lesson you can learn from it. And if you can learn something from it, it's not a wasted opportunity. It's not a waste. It's not for, for nothing. You know, it's, uh, you could, uh, maybe learn to identify toxic people. You could start to practice your discernment a little bit. Maybe, um, Maybe when you start to identify the toxicity in your own life, you can learn to stand up a little bit more, stand up a little straighter, speak up for yourself, and be more assertive and deal with these people in a more effective way. And don't, don't let them ruin your life if you are not the source of the drama. If you are the source of the drama, I meant to say this earlier, um, be honest with yourself. If you are the source of the drama, I think it would behoove you to go see a therapist. I think it would help you to go talk to somebody, a professional. I'm not an expert. These are just my opinions. I think, you know, a lot of people don't like the idea of therapy, but I think it could really help if you can admit, I have a lot of chaos and drama in my life, and I believe I am responsible for that. I believe that I am inviting it into my life and I don't want to do that anymore and I need help to stop. That is an amazing thing to be able to say. That is phenomenal. I would be willing to bet most people who like chaos and conflict in their life would never be able to say that. They would never be able to admit fault because they like to blame other people like my Facebook friend, I don't think she would ever in a million years be able to say that. I don't think she could ever be honest with herself about it. Because from everything I've seen her post, allegedly, it's always, my life would be so much better if so-and-so wouldn't do such-and-such, -and, -such, and if I could just get so-and-so to stop doing this and saying that. She never accepts blame for anything. It's never her fault. It's always somebody else. So, but if you can be honest with yourself... I think it would be a wonderful first step towards removing this drama from your life and figuring out why it's there to start with and why it's been there for so long. You could start by looking back at your past. Maybe you've, maybe there's something there that you could explore with a therapist. Um, but yeah, look for the lessons. There are always things you can learn from everything you go through good or bad. If nothing else, you can look at it and go, well, I don't ever want to make that mistake again. I want to learn from that mistake so I don't make it again. I like to make all new mistakes every time. I don't want to keep repeating the same mistakes. Um, so look for the lessons. And at the very least, maybe you can move ahead and not keep making the same mistakes just with different people. Because I had a pattern of that in my, in my youth when I was in my 20s of getting into basically the same relationship with different people. But it was just repeating the same mistakes until I realized what was going on and was able to stop it and not do that anymore. But it took me a while to figure it out. Now, if you have a dramatic person in your life and you, you have to be around them, because sometimes you do, 
um, there's a technique that you can use and it, you hear about it a lot. There's a whole community on YouTube that talks about narcissistic personality disorder, uh, NPD. I'm going to leave uh, some links to some websites that talk about narcissism and I highly recommend you check them out. I'm going to leave also some links to some specific um, kind of introductory videos about narcissism. If you have toxic people in your life, it may really help you to check out some of the channels and the videos that I'm going to leave for you. They, they can be a tremendous resource. One of the techniques that they talk about with narcissism is the gray rock technique. You can use the gray rock method uh, when you have to uh, deal with the drama or the dramatic person. And the basic idea of the gray rock technique is that you want to you want to go you want to be as boring and forgettable as a gray rock. You want to give them nothing to work with. You know, if you've ever had somebody in your life that they it's like they're trying to pick a fight with you, and they will come to you and start pushing your buttons and trying to pull you into an argument and they'll, they'll pick, pick, pick and you blow up and then they go, Whoa, where did that come from? Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's a little dramatic, but they were the one who initiated it. Yeah. If you want to try to deal with these people, you can try the gray rock technique. I would not recommend trying to go gray rock. If this is someone who could be physically abusive, that's a whole other area that we're not going to talk about. If you have someone who is physically abusive, you need to get away immediately and seek help beyond a therapist. Um, the gray rock is just when you have someone that just antagonizes you, you know, nitpicks, picks that. So if they came to you and said, Hey, you look really ugly today. You just go, Oh, and you just, you just give them nothing. You just give them nothing. Didn't you hear me? Mm -hmm. I said you look really ugly. Yep. You just, you give them nothing. No smirk, no expression on your face. You're as boring as a gray rock. And you can do it by email communication or text or whatever. Or you could just ignore them, just not say anything at all. And it... And, you know, in my case, I've had to do this. It got worse before it got better. They would amplify it like they would ratchet it up. But it went way up and then it dropped to nothing and the person just went away. So it does work. There, are, there you can, if you just search gray rock on YouTube, you can find tons and tons of videos to tell you a lot more about the gray rock technique, like when to use it, how to use it, when not to use it. Um, tons of videos about the gray rock technique. Okay, and here is another thing that can kind of head off drama at the pass. And this is something I think a lot of people do without meaning anything. They don't mean any harm. But, and we've all known people like this, don't give unsolicited advice. If someone has not asked for your advice, a lot of times it's better to just keep your thoughts to yourself. Just mind your own business. I know you, you probably just want to help the person. More often than not, though, I think when you give unsolicited advice, people don't take to it very well. Um, they become very defensive, very bristly, and a lot of drama can grow from that irritation that they feel. So a lot of times, one of the keys to avoiding drama is just minding your own business. You know, I, I, there have been a lot of times in my life that I've seen people heading down a path or doing things, and I would think, I really wouldn't do that. But you just kind of get a vibe, like you just get this instinct, like if I tried to say how I really feel, they're not going to take to it. They're not. If nothing else, they'll just shut me out and then they won't, they won't seek my counsel later. They're not open to hear this right now. So I'm going to keep to myself. I'm just, I'm going to zip it. I'm going to keep quiet. But yeah, don't give advice unless the person specifically asks for it. I know it's hard. <laughs> Avoid people who say this, for the most part. A lot of times, pay attention to people who say, I know I said it. I know I said it. I hate drama. I do hate it. I hate it so much. But like my friend on Facebook, allegedly, you know, this is after dozens and dozens of posts about stomping people's tails, multiple people's tails, 
for looking at her wrong or driving by her house or and I'm thinking what grown ass woman has this many people antagonizing her and apparently they are not working there's not like some big network of people trying to do this it's like different people how do you how do you end up with that I hate drama but I keep generating it in my own life somehow yeah you have to you have to figure out whether or not do you really hate it do you really or are you are you actively seeking it out and along that line recognize when you might be creating drama because that I think that subconscious I don't think people realize they don't wake up going oh it's a great day to start some drama and then they talk to somebody no recognize when you're doing something that's going to cause problems like um if you see something on social media okay let's say person a you saw that person a said something on social media about person b and it wasn't nice you have a choice now you can do nothing which i would recommend personally or you could contact person b and say hey person a is talking about you over here you're creating drama you are i know you think you're helping i know you think you're doing the right thing but again, it's all put it back into perspective. In five years, is it going to matter that person A said this about person B? And is it going to matter whether or not you go run your mouth to person B about it? It's probably not going to matter. So leave it alone and mind your business. Just live your life and don't worry about it. Like another example would be office office politics. If you work in an office, there's probably some level of office politics that goes on in there where you know you have gossip and you have this group and this group and you know they don't get along and this person says this about these people and they say this about this person and i've never been one to get involved in office politics when i go to work i go into work i go into my office and i shut the door literally every day i go into work i shut the door to my office i do my job and I go home. I don't really talk to anyone at all. And I was that way at my old job when I used to work at the law firm. I did the same thing. I would go into my office or when I worked in a cubicle, I would go to my cubicle, I would do my work, and then I would go home. I was not standing in the break room talking about who said what, who did what, who up on the 14th floor said this and who on the 12th floor said that. I don't care. I don't care. I never got involved in all that. You know, it's fun to make gossip videos. It is. It's fun. But in real life, we're too old for that. Seriously, if you're over 20, you're too old for that shit. Don't do that. Just stop. Just stop. Pay attention to your own stuff. Pay attention to your own responsibilities in your own life and just forget about the rest of it. Do not stir up trouble where there is no trouble. Just leave it. And if person B finds out that person A said something, person B can decide how to deal with it on their own. You do not have to be in the middle of that. Just leave it. You can change your perspective. You can. And I know it's hard when you're mired in drama, you're mired in turmoil, you're in the middle of it, you know, you're in the middle of the storm. But you can, you can rise above it. Just imagine you're standing outside of your own life and you're looking at your life from an observer's perspective. How much of this stuff that you're getting tore up about, how much of it really matters? How much of it is really important? Really? Again, how much of this in five years is going to matter? Probably very little of it. You know, I would tell my Facebook friend if I, she would probably try to kick my tail if I said it, but she is, she's like Joy from My Name is Earl. Oh my Lord, she's a little spitfire. She really is. She would probably kick my butt if I said this, but I would say, you know, if I were you, I would take all that energy and time that you're putting into being angry at these people. I would take it all and put it into your children. I would put it into your hobbies, your work, your new grandchild who's coming. Put it all into something that matters because in five years, all of that is going to matter. These other people won't. Why are you putting so much effort into them? Take it and put it into your own family 
or your, your own little world. Quit worrying about what these people are doing or saying. And once you stop worrying about it, I think you'll see an amazing change. Because once these people figure out they can't get your energy anymore, they'll go find somebody else. They're like energy vampires. They will go find someone else to get supply from. If they can't get it from you, they will go away. And it's like magic. They will, they will just vanish from your life. They may try to come back around occasionally to see if you'll bite, but change your perspective and realize they don't matter. And make it clear to them that they don't matter. And they will leave you alone. And don't feed into other people's drama, like I was saying. You know, if, if you see a potential squall brewing over here between two people, stay out of it. It does not involve you. I understand it. Maybe it's, maybe one of the people is a friend of yours. But maybe the best thing you can do is try to set an example for that person and say, look, we're getting too old for this. Um, work out your problems with that person and if you can't work them out, just get away from them. Well, there's no need for this constant fighting. We are too old to be acting like this. We're not on a soap opera. This is not Dynasty. We're not going to be tackling one another in the living room. It's not Jerry Springer. We are embarrassing ourselves. It's time to stop. So I, the older I get, the more ridiculous it is that I actually know people who are my age who still act this way. It's, it's embarrassing. Um, and this can be one of the most important things you do. Reconsider unhealthy relationships. And I'm including family members in that. I have had to cut contact with family members because of drama in the past. Um, I know a lot of people say, well, it's blood, you know, it's family. You should stay in touch no matter what. I am not of that opinion. I used to be. But if you have a truly toxic family member who is ruining your life, I think you owe it to yourself for your own peace and happiness to get away from them. I do. I know, I know not everybody agrees with that. That is my opinion. You are certainly welcome to your opinion. I just don't, it's, you know, if you have a tumor in your body, you don't try to reason with it. You cut it out, even if it's a family member. So if you have, you know, a family member or a friend or any relationship that's unhealthy and toxic for you, you might want to uh, reconsider that. Maybe it's time to distance, at, at the very least, distance yourself from that person. Maybe minimize your contact with them. If you still have to see them, just try to keep it to a minimum. And when you do see them, look for the signs that the toxicity is bubbling up. Keep the conversations kind of on a surface level. You know, just discuss light topics. If it starts to get serious, just remove yourself from the conversation. Just, just excuse yourself and go somewhere else. Or you can be very blunt, and I had to do this once with a family member. I had to say, I'm not going to talk to you about that, and we're not going to go there. I'm happy to talk to you about other things, but we are not going to argue about that again. And it kind of, they were taken aback by it, but they changed gears. And the conversation was a little awkward after that, but they didn't try to pick a fight. So it was nice. Be clear and straight with other people. And that goes back to, you know, I think I had another one that was similar to that. Uh, yeah, communicating honestly. Again, just try to be very clear with people. You know, don't beat around the bush. Don't be vague. Talk directly to the person that you have an issue with. Don't hope that it gets back through to them through the grapevine because like the game of telephone, whatever you say by the time it gets to them is not going to be what you originally said. It's going to be something else. It's probably going to be something malignant or not what you meant at all. And they're going to take it wrong and they're going to get mad. Be very clear and straight with other people. Always say what you mean and mean what you say. And I think if you can do that, it will avoid problems with people. And, and this is something that I have been fascinated with and I've been learning a lot about for the last year or two. Learn about narcissism, ov uh, covert and overt. And again, I'm going to leave some uh, channels, some YouTube channels about narcissism. A lot of help. 
lots of information. And just watch some videos about narcissists. It may not be what you think it is. Um, a narcissist, when you think of a narcissist, you may just think it's somebody who gazes into a mirror all day, but that's not what a narcissist is. It could be that a lot of your drama and toxicity is coming from a narcissist. And even if it's someone that you can't completely remove from your life, learning about narcissism can help you learn some techniques to deal with them more effectively. And it can significantly reduce your stress when you're dealing with them. Um, so you have covert narcissists and overt narcissists. Now the overt narcissists are, you know, they're very obvious. They're not going to try to hide how they really are. The covert narcissists are the dangerous. I think they're, I think they're more dangerous. Honestly, that's my opinion because it's not obvious at first. When you first meet them, they present a mask. They're not at all who they appear to be. And they can fool you into thinking they're somebody that they're not. And you don't realize until you've been involved with them for quite a while that they are pretty, pretty awful, honestly. Um, but yeah, I have some good channels so you can learn more about narcissists. And um, you can learn some of the, the signs to look for, some of the some of the fallout from dealing with narcissists, whether it, it a narcissist can be anybody. It can be a man, a woman, rich, poor, from anywhere in the world. Uh, it can be a parent. It can be a spouse. It can be a coworker or a friend. It could be you. It could be anybody. But once you start to learn about them, it can really change your life. And I'm going, again, I'm going to leave some videos down there that are good introductory videos to learn about narcissists. I, th I honestly, my opinion is that a lot of drama in the world originates from narcissists. That's, that's my opinion. And, um, but I'm going to leave some links. Dr. Carter, Dr. Les Carter from Surviving Narcissism is my favorite when it comes to learning about narcissists. He's made tons of videos about it. He's very clear. He's interesting to listen to. And he has a cute dog named Gus. But Dr. Carter is really great, but I have some, I have several others here that I'm going to leave a link to their channels too. But Surviving Narcissism is a great, it's a great one to start with. So I'm going to link some videos and I think most of them are Dr. Carter's. So yeah, that was everything I had to say about drama. I really hope that some of this could help you and I hope you enjoy videos like this. I don't do them very often, but I had several people ask me to do another kind of a Mama Mary's lecture. So I thought I would do it for this in honor of my theoretical Facebook friend that I would love to help, but I just don't think she would be receptive to it. Um, I would hope that one day maybe she'll get some help, but I don't know. I, I I just hate the thought of her being, you know, in her 50s and 60s and 70s and still acting this way, but at least I've muted her now and I don't have to read it anymore. I can't help her, so, but I don't want to be that way, and I'm pretty sure you don't either. I, I don't want to get stuck with that rotten frame of mind. I want, I want, to, I want to live a stress, a, a life with less stress, less anxiety, and less drama. I truly enjoy it and it's one of the best things I ever did. So, but thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you again really soon.